But right now we're going to take you back to our top story this hour. That was Tony Blair's appearance at the Iraq inquiry here in London. Joining me to discuss his appearance is Mark Ellis from the International Bar Association. Steve McLaughlin, he's a former soldier and the author of Squaddy, A Soldier's Story. And Haider Massawi is a commentator on Iraqi affairs. Gentlemen, welcome to you all. Thanks for coming in. First of all, Mark, let's deal with the legality, the question of the legality of the invasion. We did not clear that up at all, did we? Yeah, it was similar to what has been stated uh, all along, and, and that is um, that you've got a sense that the decision to move forward with a military action had been made something quite early in this entire process. And the sense you got from the testimony today from Mr. Blair is uh, the efforts to try to mold uh, the legal requirements that I think Blair desperately needed to have in order to find a legal justification. So the discussions on then Attorney General uh, Peter Goldsmith as to what is needed in order for Blair to say, I'm justified in doing this. How much do you believe he was giving the responsibility, effectively blaming Peter Goldsmith for the fact that uh, he eventually said, about a month before the invasion, he eventually said, well, actually, he believed it could be justified legally? It's, it's interesting because there was a bit of give and take, I think, between Blair and, and Goldsmith as to who said what and when. Now, Goldsmith had, had has been quite consistent in stating that uh, initially he stated uh, that there needed to be a second uh, resolution on this to confirm this resolution 1441. Uh, but again, as the as the political pressure I think started moving uh, quite uh, quite aggressively. Um, the Attorney General then started uh, having some uh, some second thoughts on this, uh, but Blair said today, which I thought was fascinating, had Peter Goldsmith said no, we would not have gone forward. And I find that a little difficult to understand uh, because by the time uh, Goldsmith was asked yes or no, we were far down that road. I don't think it was going to be reversed. And, uh, Goldsmith gave the, the green light and that's where we went. And that's why it happened. Okay, Haida Massawi, um, Tony Blair was absolutely robust in the defense of his reasons why he was going to war in Iraq. First of all, he said it was about WMDs and then he made the case that it would have been risky anyway not to have tackled the regime. He said it's at least arguable that Saddam was a threat if he'd been left in place for several more years with oil at $100 uh, a barrel, he would have had the intent and the means to act and the UK and its allies would have, quote, lost our nerve. Does he have a case there, do you believe? Absolutely. Uh, removing Saddam, I'm, mm. we're talking about here. Uh, if we go back a little bit further uh, to the 80s, Saddam started the war with Iran, which lasted for over eight years. Then he uh, waged uh, a chemical attack on the Kurds in the north. In 1990, he occupied Kuwait. Iraq lived for, uh, through 12 years of forgotten war. There was bombing in Iraq, no fly zones in the south and north, sanctions on the people of Iraq. So at some point, that should have uh, must end for the Iraqi people. So by coming to remove Saddam from an Iraqi point of view, that was good for uh, for the Iraqi people. From, 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 from some Iraqis' for, point of view, obviously not every Iraqi I, would have agreed that the invasion I would happen. say most of, even Saddam's supporters, if you go back to the war itself, now it lasted for 19 days, even his own guards did not fight for him. But what happened after the war uh, was horrible. That's what uh, where it went wrong. That's what should be investigated. I want to talk about that a, a little bit later on. Do you believe, though, that the case was there for a legal invasion of Iraq? Mark Ellis disagrees. Well, if we talk about the legal term, uh, the term itself, Iraq went through 12 years of sanctions legally, but killed hundreds of thousands of people. It was by a UN resolution approved by the international community. Was that moral? So uh, we have to put the legal and moral issues together to, uh, to talk about Iraq. Iraq is different uh, than any other country in the world. Sim McLaughlin, you of course were a soldier in Iraq, you served I in Iraq. Tony Blair today denied that there was, quote, a cavalier attitude to planning. He was absolutely certain about that. He said that the planning had taken place months beforehand and that uh, no uh, British soldier, no armed forces were denied any of the equipment that they needed. Is that true from your perspective? I don't think so. Tony Blair is a Machiavellian figure, as indeed are most of the top civil servants and government advisers we've seen. 
he's a very disingenuous man. Uh, personally speaking, from my point of view, as a soldier on the ground, we always knew, we always believed in our hearts that there were never any WMD. It was what we in the military call an open secret. We used to joke about it, oh yeah, we're here for the WMD. It was something that was derided. It, it, it was considered a, a, a comical uh, kind, kind of... But of as affairs. a soldier, are you paid to have those opinions or are you paid to carry out the wishes of your government at you're, the time? You're paid to serve, unfortunately, you're paid, paid to serve the government. Uh, and the policy of the day was we were in Iraq uh, on the face of it to, to search for WMDs, but we all knew that was not the case at all. So when the war actually started, he himself admitted that the planning for post-war Iraq could have been better. He admitted that they, he said that, that, that they didn't realise that there was going to be so many what he called terrorists out there who would be fighting on the ground, that there would be sectarian violence. Did you believe that there was enough thought put into what would happen once the initial fighting had happened and Saddam Hussein had been overthrown? Not at all from start to finish. As a matter of fact, I think we shouldn't have gone into Iraq in the first place. I think it would have been far better uh, considering military action against Iran back in 2002, 2003. Saddam Hussein, dreadful he was, had absolutely nothing to do whatsoever with 9-11. Al-Qaeda and Saddam Hussein are diametrically opposed because he was a very secular, uh, very corrupt, not a very good Muslim to be frank. So yeah, he's not a popular man in the Muslim world by any stretch of imagination. Uh, so I, I believe that the decision to invade Iraq on every level was wrong and all it's done it's given al-qaeda a great big recruiting sergeant to say to everybody in the middle east look what britain's done look what america's done Hi, I need to talk to you obviously about post-war Iraq. Uh, Tony Blair today very keen to actually link what is happening in Iraq at the moment as to what is happening with Iran in the world at, at the moment. Why did it fail? Why did the, did the post-war plans that were supposedly been set out by the US and uh, by the UK, why did they not work? Well, from day one, they were there supposedly, one of the reasons supposedly was to help the Iraqi people, to free the Iraqi people. The first decision was to rule Iraq by American and by British personnel. They did not use the Iraqi uh, opposition forces or the Iraqi people. They were free at that time. To, to have a Muslim country ruled by Paul Bremer was uh, the biggest mistake. That was uh, one of the reasons why uh, so many were recruited and went to Iraq to fight. Well, he, he admitted that the disbanding of the Iraqi army had been, quote, probably a mistake. That was the second issue. Mm. Had we had an Iraqi government immediately after the war, they wouldn't have taken those decisions the way the Americans and British have done. I mean, uh, debatifications, I totally support the debatifications, but the disbandment of the army was wrong, at least in the way they did it. Uh, although the army, they all went home, but. Uh, you cannot just decide there is no more army and then wait for over a year before starting a new army. They did not start the following day to establish or uh, start a new army, no. They waited for a whole year when all the terrorists were there. The, the arms of the, previous, uh, the Iraqi army were in the public, on the, uh, on the streets. So you had uh, all this uh, reasons to have a catastrophe because you had the terrorists, you have the weapons, and you had the, uh, not enough forces to secure peace in Iraq, and you have open port, a border. What did you expect that was? You know, I, it's interesting because we've now touched on two issues, the weapons of mass destruction and the, uh, the, the failure in the, in the post-war period. Connecting that to the, the, to the issue of legality, had either of those been successful in the sense had they found weapons of mass destruction or had the post-war period been successful, actually I don't think we would be sitting here. There would be no and, and the issue and the focus on the legality, which I think is crucial for the future, uh, would absolutely be dismissed. And as depressing as it is, probably the only good thing that's come out of this is the sense that the, the legal parameters that existed prior to the decision to invade Iraq were there for a reason because they were safeguard and and the invasion absolutely dismissed that now we're seeing people saying we need to get back to that those legal parameters i think that's a positive move well i guess that's a very good place to end the discussion i wish we could chat further but we are out of time i'd like to thank my guests mark ellis Stephen mclaughlin and Haida masari gentlemen thank, thank you very much indeed for joining us thank you.